In his first sit-down with the internal media team, newly hired Carolina Panthers head coach Frank Reich spoke about just what enticed him about this position and what brought him to Carolina. Unsurprising to myself and many others, a lot of the things that he spoke about were principles and pillars that were instilled in this team by a man that is no longer around but will never be forgotten. Let's talk about it. I'm from the foe, you dig? Welcome to The Way I See It with Jamari Overshad. This is a Carolina Panthers fan channel. Please do me a favor by hitting the like button and please make sure you subscribe as I am on my road to 1K. Trying to get this channel monetized. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get to this report. Now, in his first sit down, a few hours after his hire was announced, newly hired head coach of my Carolina Panthers, Frank Reich, sat down with the internal media team to discuss... Um, his overall thoughts on the hire and just what was so attractive to him that brought him to Carolina. Now, I'm going to let you all hear this audio, and we're going to come back and react to it now. Uh, let's go ahead and get to this audio. Work. Looks good. Um, what do you like about this team as you evaluate it? Well, obviously the defense has stood out. You know, we have an opportunity to make with the roster that we have and will continue to grow to be consistently at the top. I mean, to be consistently a top five defense. The advantage of that is you're in every game. A, a great defense keeps you in every game, and you can't ever underestimate the value of that. Um, our special teams has been really strong. Coach Tabor has done a fantastic job. And then offensively, um, there's been a lot of good things to build on. I mean, the run game really looked so strong last year as I evaluate that tape. Um, so excited to see that, the offensive line and what they're doing. The end stretch there down the second half of the season. So much to build on. Well, at one position you haven't met. So there you have it. Um, Frank Reich took, it, uh, took his time to highlight the defense, the offensive line, as well as the improved ability to run the ball down the final stretch of the season last year. And all of those things were principles and pillars of this team that were instilled in the final 12 games last year with the emergence of interim head of then interim head coach Steve Wilkes. Now, just to give you all perspective, in the first five games of the year under under uh, Matt Rule, we only uh, had six sacks. That is um, 1.2 per game. Now, in the final 12. Uh, games of the year under coach Steve Wilkes we had 27 sacks per game and that is without a potential defensive player of the year that we had last year uh, in Hassan Reddick who is now a Philadelphia Eagle uh, Yitor Gross Models absolutely sucks and has shown no pass rushing prowess whatsoever and we were still able to more than triple the output of the uh, sacks per game under coach Steve Wilkes so that just goes to show you just how strong this defensive squad is now in terms of what stood out most outside of our standout um cornerback JC Horn who is an absolute monster in coverage we stood out the most in our ability to stop the run only allowing 116 yards per game under coach Wilkes who if that 12 games had been extended and stretched out uh, over a 17 game base uh, on a 17 over a 17 game period that would have been top of uh, 15 in the league now the most glaring and the most impressive of those games are that we had three different games that the opposing team rushed for less than 50 yards. Now, if you can hold the opposing team on the other side of the field to less than 50 yards rushing in 25% of your games, one in every four games, that is a absolute uh, marvel and a, 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 a treasure of a defensive unit to be able to put up. Now, speaking to Frank Reich's um, want to and his ability to improve the defense, one thing that has to be highlighted that in his first draft in Indianapolis after being hired, in the second round, he took five-time Pro Bowler and three-time All-Pro Darius Shaq Leonard from South Carolina State University and HBCU. Rup, rup, woot, woot. But yes, he did take him in the second round, and since then, Darius Leonard has been a pillar on the All-Pro team, steadying that defense, similar to the impact that we felt from Luke Keekley in his decade that he spent here in Carolina. And so during his four years in, the, in Indianapolis, the defense was never uh, the problem with Frank Reich. 
Uh, he lost Andrew Luck, and then he fell victim to instability at the quarterback position. Defense was something that he was always able to go out and either find a defensive coach that was able to coach up his guys that he got, but he always makes sure that whatever impact that he had and uh, his opinion on the draft with him and um, GM Chris Ballard, they made sure that they had a pretty solid defensive unit, and that started by getting their quarterback of the defense in Darius Leonard. So that can speak to what we could potentially see from Frank Reich in this upcoming draft, as we all do want him to go out and get a quarterback. And I'm going to talk about his uh, what he talked about, what he wants in a quarterback in a uh, follow-up video to this one. But we can possibly expect him to go out and fill out the uh, defensive uh, holes that we have in this young defense that is tough but has um, defensive holes as well. <clears throat> now, next, we have to move over and talk about the offensive line, which is something else that Frank Reich chose to highlight. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that while Frank, when Frank Reich moved in uh, into the spot, it coincided with the time that our uh, projected starting center, Pat Elfline, went down on IR for the rest of the year. And the guy that we signed in free agency, who hopefully now will be a staple of this offensive line moving forward in Bradley Bozeman, was inserted then. And for the final 12 games, he and Wilkes um, pretty much, you know, played it, played it out together. Now, in the first five games of the season with Matt Rule and Baker Mayfield, in just five games, might I mention, just five games, there, um, the offensive line allowed 17 sacks. That is more than three per game. Now, we need to juxtapose that with the final 12 games of the year under Coach Steve Wilkes, where in 12 games, there were only 19 sacks allowed. That's less than one a game. That is less than a third of what was being allowed under the stewardship of of uh, then coach Matt Rule, which shows just how much this potent this offense, just how much potential this offensive line has, and just how bright their future may be if we can keep this unit together uh, moving forward. Now, I want to say that when um, Frank Wright took over the job in Indianapolis. Uh, he was inheriting what a lot of people thought was a sure end to be a future Hall of Fame quarterback in Andrew Luck. But in the years that preceded Frank Reich's time in Indianapolis, the offensive line there was absolutely terrible. Um, they were much maligned. The GM and the entire Colts organization were uh, always villainized for not being able to adequately supply Andrew Luck with a uh, offensive line that could protect him. Him getting sacked for uh, record times year after year uh, eventually concluded in him, in him retiring early just one year into the tenure of Frank Reich. But I bring all that up to say that in Frank Reich's very first draft, the very first player that he drafted was five-time pro bowler, three-time all-pro, and arguably one of the best linemen, if not the best lineman in the NFL, in left guard Quentin Nelson, who was projected to bring in and turn around that offensive line and uh, protect Andrew Luck. Uh, unfortunately, Luck retired, as I mentioned. But with that being said, no matter who stepped in, Jacoby Brissett, uh, Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, um, Quentin Nelson was an absolute beast, and he protected he protected them with everything he had given up. Like their offensive line is very stout now, and a lot of that can be get, a lot of that credit can be given to Frank Reich. So I want to move on to the final point that he talked about, and that is the ability to run the ball. Many people thought that once we traded. Uh, Christian McCaffrey to the San Francisco 49ers that that was pre pretty much just a concession that we were going to be tanking for the rest of the year and that um, our we were always a running team but that we were pretty much giving away the best offensive weapon that we have and arguably the best offensive weapon in the NFL everybody expected a drop off well under the stewardship of Coach Wilkes, the, uh, the exact opposite from that happened. Deontay Foreman came in, and he was an absolute beast from the jump. Chuba Hubbard came in and showed that when he is used in a stable of backs, rather than just as a bell cow back as he, uh, as he had to be in the absence of Christian McCaffrey, he is a very good dual threat um, um, running back. So with that being said, running the ball was something that we found. It was a, um, it was, a, it was, it was something that we discovered that we could do even with a limited quarterback like Sam Donald. Now I want to talk about um, 
Frank Reich is regarded as a QB whisperer. The ability to get the most out of quarterbacks, whether they be uh, young or old, he uh, you're going to get. They're going to get their best selves under Frank Reich. Now, I want to also talk about. Although he may be known as the uh, quarterback guy, I have to highlight just like what his offenses were like in his time as a head coach. Now, in his first year in Indy, he had Marlon Mack, who was a, uh, I think at this point, a, a journeyman running back in the league, but was only a one, a, a second year running back in the league at the time. He rushed for 900 yards under Frank Reich in that year, and they also drafted rookie Naeem Hines, who is uh, now with the Buffalo Bills, who had uh, nearly 750 all-purpose yards from the running back position, uh, running the ball and also catching it. So although Frank Reich is known or is um, expected to run a a more QB heavy offense, he still has been able to instill the running back into his system to make them a prominent piece. Now, that is no more uh, prominent or no more on display than when he moved into his 2020 draft and when he doubled down and he took Jonathan Taylor with the 41st pick overall. Now, just in his second year in the league, Jonathan Taylor rushed for over 1,800 yards and he caught and he caught 40 additional passes for 360 extra yards. Now that is a running back in Frank Wright's system that was able to put up over 2,000 all-purpose yards, which just leads me to believe that um, everything that Wilkes had instilled in this team is pretty much something that Frank Wright values, although he is coming in being seen as the offensive-minded guy. Everything that Steve Wilkes wanted to instill in his team seems as though it's something that Frank Reich's ideology or his um just the just the way that he thinks about the the, the construct of his team it matches a lot with Steve Wilkes, but you have the addition of the perceived offensive brilliance on his side, which I think in total probably in the end made this decision for David Tepper. A lot easier now with that being said that brings me to the end of the video man in conclusion Frank Wright wants to keep up a lot of the same principles that we found uh, Steve Wilkes wanted to instill into our locker room what do you all think about this uh, you make sure you leave your comments down below make sure you subscribe and with that being said I'm Jamario Rashad this is the way I see it and I'm out peace